folks, I'm Kevin. Welcome back to the shop. Where we left off last time was in actually trying to make all the pieces fit inside the motor. Uh, I had all of that done at that point, but the video was getting a little long and I needed to kind of wrap it up. So uh, now we're going to take a quick look back into what fit, what didn't fit, and what I had to do to get everything stuffed into the bottom end of that motor. So, uh, without wasting time, let's get busy. Okay, so we're over here at the engine. I've got everything mocked up in here. Uh, it's all set up. You'll see that I've got a couple of the main caps on with the old bolts and whatnot just to uh, hold the crank into place. Got the, um, got the rods, pistons, and everything all set in here. Um, I wanted to try to check on the clearances between the bolt heads and the side of the, of the bore down here as well as the connecting rod and the, um, the oil pickup tube. Um, when you start moving this thing around you'll see that uh, it gets really tight down there. Um, kind of hard to see but down here in this area We've got about 20, 25 thousandths of an inch clearance between the, uh, the rod head bolts, or the bolt heads, and the uh, bottom of the cylinder bores. Over here, we start to run into a little bit bigger issue. Um, here we go. Now, right there. The connecting rods have already hit the oil pickup tube. Get that little rascal out of there real quick. Okay, we've got the pipe plug in here, and you can see that the the rod's still hitting the boss, and it's going to come into contact with the pipe plug. So I'll need to go through with my sharpie and just kind of mark all of the uh, little places where it, I need to grind. And if I grind out most of those sharpie marks, we'll be okay. Okay, now to get down inside there and clean up that block and make room for everything, you need to get yourself a burr. Burr. No. A burr. Or a set of burrs. Like this cheapy set that I grabbed off of Amazon. You can get them on eBay or whatever if you don't already have a set. And to go with it, you're going to need to get yourself a grinder. Or you can use a grinder. Or if you're really industrious, you can use, well... One of these, and even a little burr for that. Um, personally, I just use this. With the burrs. I made quick short work of that stuff. Okay, I cheated and did a little of the work without you. Um, it only took about five minutes, and I really didn't want the camera in my way when I was trying to get some work done over here. Um, I took the edge off this uh, boss for the oil pump pickup. Then just a little bit of a nip on each one of the bores and just kind of went in there and smoothed them out afterwards instead of having a sharp pokey radius or a corner sticking out. I just smoothed them down. Uh, I've got all the loose uh, debris out of the block, but I need to go back in here and completely clean all of this. I've already punched the cam bearings. Uh, they're out, so I've got all the, the um, plugs out of the block so I can go through and just scrub this whole thing get it cleaned and ready for reassembly. And that's as close as it gets between the rod and the old oil pump pickup boss. We didn't quite have to get into the plug like I thought we would, but it's uh, it was pretty close. But that'll, that'll be all right there. Let's spin it on around a little further. And if you can kind of sneak down in here just a little bit, you can see the gap between the uh, between the rod bolt and the bottom of the cylinder. Uh, you're not at the best angle; like, it's really hard to photograph down there. But we got uh, we've got plenty of room here. This engine would be able to sing up to a much higher RPM than what I'm looking at and still clear everything. 
For timing, we went with another 440 source piece. This one is their adjustable uh, timing set. Um, looks like a good piece to me. I don't see any concerns with it. Um, it could have used a little bit of extra deburring on some of these, but that's just being a bit picky. Uh, there was, there's no loose little snags or anything like that that are going to come off. Looks like a good piece. I've got no qualms with it. A big uh, bonus is this one has the Torrington thrust bearing. It's a roller bearing on the back side of this, and it will help keep the cam from walking backwards and rubbing the chain against the uh, the front surface of the block. Um, the ARP bolts also trap the little uh, cam bushing here. It still sticks out further than the cam bolts, so we're good there. And it should limit the, uh, the cam from walking forward out of it. And the fact that it's a roller is kind of nice. Um, it should go a little bit easier on the timing cover. Hey, can you guys keep a secret? Don't tell anybody. This is the camshaft we're using. Okay, all the eyes have gone straight to the lift and the duration. You're thinking, what are you doing? It's a little bitty cam for a motor that big. And you're right. It is a little bitty cam for a motor this big. This, this right here tells you everything you need to know. This cam is being laid out to be able to run the power brakes and to make awesome low RPM crews in a very, very heavy car. So this thing should be making more than 500 pounds of torque when it rolls in at 2,000 RPM. And I'm hoping for more than 600 pounds of torque for as far as possible across, this, the, across the rev range. I want it to peak around 650 or so. If I get more than that, great. Now the horsepower is probably going to come in about 5.5. Maybe I'll hit 570 if I'm lucky. And if I do, I'll be giggling like a schoolgirl because this much torque is going to get this car where it needs to be. Again, it's not a drag strip queen. It's just a crazy cruiser. So this is what we're using. And don't tell anybody. I know everybody was looking at the ugly, nasty block and saying, paint that thing, do something with it. So I did. I grabbed myself some VHT, uh, early Chrysler Blue, and it's a pretty good match for the uh, original paint that was on this engine in a 1972, because Imperials used this blue, not the later Chrysler Blue or the Hemi Orange that uh, everybody seems to love these days. Um, this is pretty close to correct for the, uh, for the car. Not that that's an issue. No, I didn't, I didn't uh, paint the crank bolt because it's going to get buggered up with me slapping a wrench on it all the time anyway. Um, when I buttoned up the timing cover, I added the 440 source uh, damper. Um, so it went on there without, uh, without, any, without any kind of counterweights or anything. And the timing marks add up real nicely to the timing pointer on the 440 source timing cover. So um, it all looks pretty good. I mean, it's really close when I, uh, when I had that, that uh, cam all lined up with zero. So it looks good. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this time. Um, come on back on the next one, and uh, we'll show you uh, what we had to do about this uh, oiling system debacle.